Right, folks, one of the great things about Agritechnica is the amazing component halls that it has here. I mean, you could literally, you could walk around here and pick out all the components that you would need to build a tractor or Take any piece of farm machinery. And one of the, the key exhibitors here in the com components hall is, well, it's the legendary Cummins. There's no other way to put no it. No other so way. Thank you we so much. Are Joined by our friends at Cummins once again, uh, we've got Ian Phillips here Hi. from the manufacturer. He's going to talk with us some of the latest developments that you guys have got going on. Some really exciting stuff as yep. well. Uh, first of all, Ian, what's your role at Cummins? What do you get up to? So I'm customer engineering group lead, but also I'm heavily involved in the engineering and development of this latest project that we're stood right in front of now. Right, so this latest project then, Yep. this is the 4.5 litre. Yep. Four cylinder, structural, and it's structural. Yep, that's the important that's piece. the key bit. Because yep. obviously, we see your engine, there's so many machines which we've seen yep. around Agritechnica as we've been walking around. And a lot of the time, they're sat in a chassis. Completely. Doesn't yep. have to, you know, it's the engine's not self supported. It doesn't have to hold the rest of the machine up. Not at all. Whereas this one yep. does. So, talk us through this development. How did you arrive at a structural engine? So uh, this display shows it really well. You know, the white components on here are just some examples of what the transmission could look like, the front loader arm supports and the front axle carrier on our structural block here. As you said, it's completely integral. Without the engine, the structure would simply fall into its, into its yeah. center. You know, so we are a pivotal point in making sure that the power, the torque, but also how that all sticks together happens within that tractor. So this is what we're looking at right now, the single turbo version of the 4.5. Oil pan does most of the work in regards to the structural nature of it. As we have a look here, it's very heavy duty, but we've also then obviously reinforced the block and so on from our regular 4.5. So it's sort of split between right, those so two main components. You haven't just taken your normal 4.5 block, you've had to do work to that as well, as well as the, uh, the sump as well. Correct, yes. Yeah. So obviously normally we have a composite pan on the bottom of one of these. Yeah. So th we're talking worlds apart now. It's a fantastic piece of equipment that we've developed here. We're really confident in what it's going to be able to bring to the market. You know, it's still a really power dense little engine, mm. 4.5 litre displacement. So we share a lot of those components similar to our on and off highway variants. Okay. But the block in the pan is where we really set ourselves apart. Right. And what sort of horsepower levels are we looking, you know, it's simplified. Yeah, so, yeah, so, we're, yeah, so we're looking at anywhere between 130 to 160 horsepower with this one. So there's four ratings. Right. Uh, and we're looking at 650 Newton meters of torque across all of those. So the, the only difference between it is the rated, the horsepower rating that comes with that. So she's, she's punchy. Oh yeah, yeah. This is, is, you know, I love these little tractors when I was on the farm myself, you yeah. know, the small force of the tractors. I was going to say, you're from a farming background. Yeah, as we all are with you know Cummins. I was going to say, that really yeah. to a good point because I've been up to Darlington a few times to see you guys, see yeah. what you're up to. And it's amazing how many of you are from a farming background. Well, the thing is, yeah, we all have that kind of want and desire. We love engineering, we love tractors, we love ag, we love big bits of kit. So when there's an opportunity to come and do some engineering, because obviously farming, the face of farming is changing, we get the opportunity then to get our hands yeah. dirty still and get involved at the forefront. Speaking of the story of this engine, because we were here two years ago. Yes, sir. At the last Agritechnica, we had a really good catch up with Jürgen. Yep. Uh, you had the 4.5 litre structural on the stand then. So what's happened in terms of the story of the 4.5 litre? Where are we at now? How has it sort of evolved since then? So the 4.5 single turbo that we're looking at now, we're getting to the point where we're going to move into limited production, you know, so we're, right. we're progressing really well with that project. That's something that I'm, like I said, I'm really happy of and it's, it's a real benefit to see us taking that jump to the next piece. It is a trend that we are seeing. The, the use of six cylinders yep. in tractors is shifting up the power range completely you know once yep. upon a time when i was a, a lad far too many moons ago an 80 horse power tractor would have had to have been six cylinder totally yeah whereas now the a small six cylinder is 200 horse isn't it comfortably yes yeah. exactly so again there's a there's a place as always for a four cylinder or a six cylinder tractor depending yeah. on what you want it to do 
and the kind of work that's appro appropriate to go with that. But we're now finding that we're getting that super efficiency out of the four cylinder. The reliability is also following with it now, where once upon a time pushing a four cylinder that far would have been a yeah, problem. That's always been people's hang ups, isn't it? Always, you say always. 200 horsepower, four cylinder, someone, even to this day, which yeah. I'm sure you guys will find. Well, my dad nearly fell off a chair I when I said did. what he was doing. <laughs> and so. it's, it's that perception, and you guys yeah. will have to get the reliability side of it nailed. Exactly. And that, that's also the benefit to us because it isn't always about ag. We have all that on highway experience, mm. then all the off highway experience. So we're gaining that knowledge and reliability from all of those products yeah. all the time that we can then bake into these. There's a lot to pour into this. Completely. And that's the benefit to Cummins because it isn't always just one street for us. We, yeah. ha we have the fingers across all the pies yeah. and then we benefit from all of that. The real issue for us on there is the architecture and trying to house that on the side of the engine yeah. whilst maintaining the envelope which where the hood of the tractor would or the yeah. bonnet of the tractor would go. You have to fit this in a package. Oh yes, yeah. totally. And then we obviously we have to think about where the aft treatment is still going to fit into that as yeah. well. But uh, that was one of the main things for us of how we were going to fit those two obviously sizable components on mm. the side of this while still giving options for free on compressors, alternators and so on like that. That's it. There's lots of ancillaries to bolt there, onto there, this. There certainly there? is, yeah. And why yeah. do you guys favour wastegate over maybe variable geometry? To well, charges? The, the benefit is, as we all know, one is cost. So mm. if there is ever an issue in the field, which we hope there isn't, you know, replacing a wastegated turbo a lot easier, but also is simplicity. Yeah. You know, we only have a little butterfly in there with a regular vacuum controlled wastegate. You can't get easier than that, yeah. really. So, yeah, that's why we aim for this kind of turbo technology. And again, we have hundreds of thousands, of, if not millions of hours of knowledge on that kind of piece well, of technology. It. I mean, you, you guys bought, it was whole set, wasn't whole it? Whole set, yeah. So yeah. you've got, again, you've got all that knowledge. Precisely. And it's, it's a family name or a name that's known across all kinds of pieces of engineering. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily even have to be attached to a Cummins engine. I was going to say, I bet it's great for you guys when yeah. you see the whole set yep. on the side of another en Precisely. competitor engine. Always makes the side of your mouth just, just lift up a little bit with We've a little a, smirk. A little bit of Cummins in there. Yeah, a that's, the bit one. Of magic that's all, all that matters on. in my mind. Yep. There we go. <laughs> now, designing, developing an engine yep. like this, there's going to be some hurdles, some challenges. What some would you years. say are the main challenges of coming up with this? four and a half litre structural engine. So for us really it is simply making sure that we are going to be able to meet the low cases that we expect is going to see actually in the field. Yeah. You know, so this went through so many design iterations simply on CAD and, uh, and like finite element analysis, you know, FEA. So this has been tested beyond belief on a simulation base because it's mm. cheaper for us to do that and make small tweaks and stuff to yeah. the design before it even becomes a real engine like this and it then gets put into like beam testing as we call it where yeah. we might hold it at one end and twist it like that you know it's it's you get really savage yeah, with it it is awful you know from an yeah. engineer's point of view it, it makes you cringe you because you, because you <laughs> want to break it because you got to learn from it it's gonna be a fun day though that isn't it? It, it it depends on when it breaks all right as long as it breaks when it's meant to exactly yeah yeah, yeah if it breaks a, a thousand cycles into it and yeah. it's too early then so, that's a problem right but back uh, to the drawing board again. precisely but you know from the, some of the stuff that we've been doing this as well the, the way that it's actually put up with the the kind of test that we've put it through in yeah. the loads it's handled it like an absolute beast so mm. i'm i'm really happy with it and with it being a four cylinder as well well i suppose we'll you know, undoubtedly, we'll find these on a lot of load attractors, mm -hmm. which again yep. puts in that extra twist, that extra Precisely. stress into the engine. Again, exactly, and that's kind of why, with this additional piece of white plate, we're, we're showing part of the front loader arm support bracketry yeah. that would go on there, just as again, as a bit of a concept to show that we have considered it. And, yeah. you know, we, we've developed it, we understand it, we've got the voice of the customers um, that this is exactly what it'll be used for. Yeah. And I've got, I mean, obviously you can't reveal at all, you know, maybe where it's going, customers, if you have customers or at all, whatever. But have you put this in the tractor, you know, to so see what it's like, see what it does? Yeah, we have our own mule tractor. Yeah. That we have done so. And um, yeah, we've had it out with real world farmers around the Darlington area and stuff right. as well. That's got um, cool. It, it was cool. Yeah, yeah, I had a little drive of it myself. I was very happy I with mean, it. That's really yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a real special feeling when you get to actually yeah. test out a piece that you've done so much 
on paper design work with, yeah. and then actually it becomes a reality. There it is. Yeah, and it works. Yeah, and it works well. Yeah. You know, I was really impressed with it because we had it on a, with a set of front loader arms on our mule tractor as well, and I was genuinely impressed. Yeah. I suppose, you know, just going back to talk about design challenges as well, because yeah. obviously you've got so many different duty cycles to consider, Completely. all the different work that this yeah. engine's going to have to cope with. But then you've got gearbox transmission. Yep. It could be a continuously variable transmission. It could, it be. could be a power shift. It, certainly it could, could be anything. Yep. So again, how do you, where do you start with that? Well, that's where, again, we, we kind of leverage our knowledge of other off-highway you know, um, other off-highway OEMs that we've worked yeah. with, you know, because it isn't the first time we'll have worked with a CVT transmission on the back of one of our B4.5s, for example. So okay. we have data yeah. in that. It's not the first time we've worked with a power shift transmission. You know, we've got all that knowledge from front end loader work, you know, that can mm. have an enormous uh, transmission hung on the back. So we can pick on all of that and learn more about it. And then we can apply it to how we then develop our software, how we develop the hardware, and the load cases it yeah. could be put through as well. So yeah, uh, that's again, our kind of benefit. We have a library of people and data sat behind us that we can call upon to help yeah. get the best out of this. And, you know, so the likes of you, you know, you're from a farming background, yep. you are proper engineering here. <laughs> what, you know, what does it mean to you and the, the rest of the company's team? You know, you are providing the heart of the tractor. Yep. That's what, you know, it's around this. Yeah, totally. It's, it's, it's really nice because, again, it's a way of giving back to the agricultural community even without being directly affiliated to it. Yeah. You know, I love, since the day I could walk, I've loved tractors. Yeah. I still love tractors now. Also, the bigger the better because we always love a massive tractor with yeah. lots of horsepower. But seeing something like this that you know is going to be hopefully produced in the thousands and support farmers of all different sizes, all different backgrounds across the world really really kind of makes me happy you know that's yeah. a, a massive achievement and i really appreciate the fact that cummins is looking into this in more more ways because we always used to be in agriculture in a big way mm. we may have taken half a step back but i think we're now pushing ourselves right into that front of focus well, again that's it. And i think even though maybe people are slightly less aware of you in agriculture these days compared to you know going back to the 90s yep, with exactly. ksih exactly yeah, yeah. they were the heydays yeah weren't they? you always knew when one of those was working on the hill beside oh, you oh you could yeah. hear it well and it sounded mental. <laughs> that's well. exactly what i mean and yep. uh, but i think even now you you're still a stub, substantial player as we've seen Completely. around agritechnica you know yep. we've seen you in the class trion and evian combines yeah we've seen you in in the agrifax sprayers in the versatile delta tracks, oh, yeah. all sorts. Yeah. You're still there, aren't you? Precisely, yeah. yeah. We, all, we always do sort of hover around in there. It's just that the coming sea might be a little bit smaller yeah. than normal, but we want to make sure that we're providing the necessary power and torque to support those machines. Yeah, that's it, right. So we'll move a little bit further down the yep. line. So obviously, you can't have an engine without, in yep. this day and age, after treatment. And what we're looking at here is the DOC DPF which we're kind of planning to be built up onto the top of the valve cover. So that would be a horizontally mounted version. So this element here. Yeah, this, the top one is. That's I, gonna sit up. I'd imagine, again, if you look at the architecture of most modern tractors, yeah. yeah, it will be in this kind of area somewhere. Again, it's not limited to that, but that's what we expect. Right. And again, we have then the SCR can, which is the secondary piece here, that again, that would be mounted actually in a vertical that we would expect. And that would be sort of somewhere or in this location, yeah. high or so, low. So, steering wheel, cab there, yeah, exactly. air post there, and that and then, be... Yeah, it'll be here, or, you know, obviously deer like to have it high, and then, you know, yeah. it depends on where you want to have it. So, that, that's the plan for that. And the idea is then the OEM can connect onto the tailpipe. They can put their nice um, sort of cover around it to yeah. make sure no one gets hurt or any will burn off it, and uh, away we go. And route that where they like it. I yeah, suppose precisely. that's the key thing from you guys, is allowing that flexibility for your OEMs. Exactly, because you know the, the important piece for us is you know we try to do a one thing fits all, but we you know we give the opportunity for OEMs to move the sensor tables around, mm -hmm. maybe, you know, where they want to route their DEF lines and so on. But also there is some complexity and flexibility, sorry, on where these cans can actually go. So we yeah. will try and support, we provide guidelines for where they can go, how they can be fitted. But after that, it's up to the OEM, and then we will support the installation when we get further down as well. There you go. Right, now you mentioned before, yes. big tractors. Big tractors. Big tractors. So we will move on. We'll, we'll park yep. this one there for a little bit. 
yep. the four and a half liter, and we'll move over to your X15. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, this is the other end of the spectrum. So what we're yeah. looking at here is still the conventional style of like non-structural based uh, X15, but this is the, the kind of latest iteration of this. So it is lighter and there is a more there's a greater power yeah. output on here. And this will this is 15 liters. This is 15 as liters. As the name suggests. Yes, yeah, certainly. Yeah. Right. So it comes from the you know the good X15 that's been in big Peterbilt trucks and so on for days of old. This has been in some uh, big front end loaders and so on in the past. Even been in some forage harvesters and so on as well. But this is like I said the latest version of this that. This is next generation. Offering. This yeah, is certainly. It. Yep. Yep. It's a really nice looking bit of kit. Um, Power output, like I said, out of the box is up to about 600. If we want to go higher than that, we can investigate that with certain OEMs yeah. if we want to. Um, but yeah, that's what that's where we're looking for, and we're just getting the efficiency out of all of our diesel engines increased. You know, yeah. the the fact that power density is there gives us more to offer, really, in that market. And straight out of the box, 600 yeah. hours. What, what there a, you go. What <laughs> heaven, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And what have you, you know, on this latest generation? What are maybe are some of your key developments, key changes to it? So I think it's the fact that obviously we've managed to reduce some of the weight out of it as well with you know a better design of the block and, and mm. understanding of some of those components. We've taken away some of that over-engineering that wasn't necessarily needed. Yeah. So we're maintaining the reliability whilst still increasing that power and you know obviously weight of these kind of things. If we can make this lighter, then it can maybe suit an OEM vehicle better. Uh, well, that's it. If you can make this element lighter, they can increase their payload. Well, that's potentially that's exactly that. Yes, yeah, precisely. So, yeah, that, that's that's one of my main takeaways yeah. from this one. And is this this is currently being tested over in the states? Is yeah, it, this correct. Is in, yeah, uh, you know, tractor units. You know, yeah, truck tractor units. Yeah, there's that as well. Yeah, so there's the on highway version of this, yeah. uh, as well as the off highway version. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I don't get to play with this one as much as I would like to, <laughs> but uh, right now I've got my sights firmly set on the 4.5. Um, yeah, just coming back to the because yeah. I can't take my eyes off it. No, it is a fantastic <laughs> bit of kit to look at. Uh, at the event, I know we're only one day into Agritechnica 2025 mm -hmm. so far. Uh, what's people been saying about this? You know, has there been interest for it in, I don't know, maybe forestry applications, ag applications, whatever. Well, yeah, t today I think the most of the um, interest has been just for the sheer size of it. Just, you know, right. Because again, there isn't <laughs> often... Sure stop it. Yeah, precisely. Often yeah. people think about like the smaller car engines or whatever like that, and then they hop across one of these and actually see it stood out for a change. And they're like, wow, look at that, you know, yeah. so... But uh, yeah, moving on to like the helm, so the high, effic uh, high efficiency, you know, um, engine, uh, fuel agnostic piece of this, that's the other thing that kind of really gets the attention because this doesn't necessarily only have to be diesel. Yeah, you know, we have the other options to go for gas uh, or for H, uh, for hydrogen and stuff. Right, so, and you future proof that into this. Yeah, precisely. And that was one of the main aspects of the 2027 version of this engine is to look after that into the future. Right. So at the moment, you know, we're looking at a diesel version. Yep. Totally. Here. Yep. Uh, if this was, I don't know, hydrogen, for example, internal yeah. combustion engine, what would change on that? Is it, is it mostly in the head? Yeah, yeah, it's mainly around the head area. There's obviously some internal pieces to the block, but again, from the block side of things, it shouldn't be too much of a change. It should be kind of head up and yeah. then fuel system. And you'll see, obviously, the inlet manifolds change dramatically to make sure we're getting the mix of gas and air as mm. we need to and so on. But really, yeah, the, the kind of physical size of it doesn't really change a great deal depending on which one you choose when you first buy the engine. Right, and presumably you've got other fuels in it, natural gas, all that kind of thing. Yeah, so you got LNG, CNG, that kind of thing. Yeah, that's what we were looking for. So that's one of the derivatives that you yeah. can choose. So. Cool stuff. Well, Ian, <laughs> as you might be able to tell, I could probably talk to you, you know, I could probably geek out on this stuff. Yeah. And we'll have to have another visit up to Darlington at some point. It would point. be my pleasure. Particularly, because every time I go up, even though, you know, I, I maybe don't see you guys for two years or three years, but every time I go up, you've just changed so yeah. much stuff. It's constantly evolving yeah. up there. And the last time I was up there, you've got this brand new test facility as well. Yeah, exactly. So it'd be great to see that up yep. and running as well. See There's a very involved. good chance that we can make that happen for you, sir. Good stuff. Well, Ian, once again. Been a pleasure. Thank you very much for your time. Thank that you. has been absolutely, yeah, it's been awesome. That. Thank you. Excellent. No, thank you for your time.